Chapter 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Unedited, please do correct me if you find any typo or mistranslation. Chapter 1 Rebirth, A. Dot Shanghai, at the 60th Annual Film Festival Award Ceremony This was undoubtedly a star-filled night, even the surrounding colorful lights seemed more dazzling than usual. The camera's flashes were as bright as day, the carefully crafted diamonds on the dresses were shining brightly, and the stars of the entertainment circle were all dressed up, walking gracefully through the red carpet, revealing a flawless smile to the camera. However, the presence of one person made the screams that had filled the area suddenly reached its peak. G ran. G ran. The long that awaited fans lifted the fluorescent boards on their hands and called the man's name immediately after, all the photographers also pointed their cameras at that person's direction. The man appearing at the end of the red carpet was the most popular movie star in the entertainment circle. G ran. The man was wearing a white long gown, with a black hat adorning his head. The traditional styled clothing accentuated his tall and slender figure. He stopped on the red carpet, his whole persona exuding a gentle and warm aura. Walking by his side was a newly debuted female artist named Xia Shiqi, a pale blue Chong Sam lining her exquisite stature, and a delicate hairpin crowning her flowing black hair. She looked dignified and elegant, while also maintaining her natural sexy charm as a woman. They were a perfect match for each other. Their matching traditional clothes were based on the image of a pair of hero and heroine from a recent popular box office movie. Xie Shiqi set her foot on the red carpet with her arm linked with Ji Rance. Her fingers clenched in obvious tense at Ji Rance's hand. Ji Ran smiled, patted the back of her hand to express comfort, then said softly. Don't be nervous, just walk slowly. Look more to the right. There are several large website reporters there, pay attention to your expression, let them get a few good shots of you. Okay. Shishichi nodded. In addition of always being serious when filming, Ji Ran was also always extremely considerate in treating girls, therefore, over the years there had never been any gossip spread about him. In a top-class entertainment circle, this was a rare feat the two of them faced the cameras together, and the host immediately handed over a microphone to them. Welcome to Mr. Ji Ran and Miss Xie Chi Shi. Ji Ran took the microphone, smiled and said. Hello everyone, I am Ji Ran. His smile was very bright, appeared like the sun in front of the cameras, many of his fans burst into an immediate exaggerated screaming match when they saw this magnified smile of his. The host was also entranced by his brilliant smile, and when he finally came back from this trance, he asked Ji Ran. Cough, Mr. Ji, heard in the troubled time, filming process you have never used stuntmen when doing the fighting scene, is this true? As we all knew, when it came to difficult martial arts, a lot of stars would use a stunt to complete it, but Taijin never did, all difficult plays were done by himself. Regarding this, people started to spread all sorts of rumors, some said that he came from a martial arts family, others said that he had learned the fist kung fu in his childhood, in a word that this star had extraordinary skill, especially when doing martial arts. The host went on to say. The troubled time has many fighting scenes, there are also some parts where you have to be kicked and punched in the air, these dangerous scenes, you also did them personally. Ji Ran answered frankly. Yes, this play of fighting action for me is not difficult, do not need to use martial arts skill. The host was surprised. So the rumor about you being a black belt in karate is true. Ji Ran smiled. Yes, I have also learned some boxing and Tai Chi, I have been interested in these since childhood. Dot, the host exclaimed, it seems I should be more careful not offend you, otherwise I will be beaten badly by you. Ji Ran said. Fortunately, I don't usually hit people easily. What will happen when you hit someone? Ji Ran laughed. I will make them regret being born as a human being. Everyone. Dot. There was a deafening scream from the scene, and some excited fans even shouted, Sadism, beat it, and do it live. A drop of sweat rolled down the host's forehead, 
and he finally decided not to discuss this topic anymore, handing the microphone to the Xiexer Chi, it's your first time acting with Ji Ran, how do you feel? Xiexer Chi said. Ji Ran Sr.'s popularity is very high, and I'm just a new debut. In the beginning, I feel very big pressure, afraid that my own performance will not be good enough, but I never thought, even though this senior is always especially serious when filming, but he is also very caring for rookies, always accompanying me patiently in the play, he also taught me a lot of skills, I gained many benefits from working with him. Ji Ran looked back at her, smiled and encouraged. You are flattering me too much. She also has worked very hard, and I'm happy to have a chance to cooperate with her. The two of them had tacit understanding, and the host would have liked to explore it more, however due to the time limit, he only had enough to ask a few simple questions before he had to let them into the venue. The ceremony soon began, the announcement of each award was always followed by a scene of applause. The audiences were waiting for the last heavyweight, best actor, award, the film festival this time also coincided with its 60th anniversary, so the competitions were unusually fierce, the finalists, in addition to the traditional themed film, Troubled Time, there were also a light and fresh love film starred by a popular actress, a Sai. Fi movie which cost billions in its large production, as well as a tear-dot-jerking affection drama, each film had a very high evaluation in the box office. The honored guests stalled for a few minutes, before finally announcing the answer. I hereby announce that the winner of the 60th Annual Film Festival Best Actor is Troubled Time, G. Ran. The scene of applause following this announcement was amazing, the cheering and screaming almost enough to overturn the roof, G. Ran fans were so excited to the point of crying. Although the competition was intense, for G. Ran to win this Best Actor award, still well dot deserved. G. Ran hugged his friends around him, then walked to the stage, took the special trophy, smiled and said. I am extremely grateful to Lou for presenting this to me. I am grateful to the support of my company. I thank the crew for their hard work. And also thanks to the people who have always been supporting and encouraging me. Thank you. His smile had always been so sincere, pure, right from the beginning of his career, so that sun.like smile had become his trademark. Even though right now he had grown to be a popular superstar who had won two Grand Prix awards, the feeling he gave off is still the same as that young and warm teenager who smiled and said, I really like acting, all those years ago. Careful people could find that every time he won an award, his winning speech never included a thank you for his family. Because he did not have family. It was a secret that the reporters took a long time to peel out. In fact, G. Ran grew up in an orphanage, he had gone through many hardships throughout his debut. When he was young, he often played cannon fodder passers.by on TV. For a long time, he even struggled to fulfill his basic needs of clothing and food, but he was always optimistic, open.minded, always conveying a positive image in interviews, he never complained about his hardship, he did not even once mention his own background in an attempt to win sympathy. His achievements were all thanks to his firm and steadfast steps. So, even when he faced many criticism for winning the Best Actor Award last year, he never felt guilty. And today, this win, would finally serve as a prove his strength. While holding the trophy and smiling brilliantly, Ji Ran stepped down from the stage. At the gala dinner that night, all the movie crew came to toast for Ji Ran, celebrating his second Best Actor winning. Taijin also did not refuse, simply took the drink lightly, however he was not a good drinker, and soon became drunk on the sofa. Xie Shi Qi looked at his frowning face, and could not help but reach out a hand to soothe his brow. Unexpectedly, the hand just stretched out, but was stopped by another hand. Miss Xie, people like him is so easy to take advantage of, right? Suddenly came a joking voice, it's Jiren's agent. Yu Qian. The manager surnamed Yu was also a powerful player, the name sounds humble and gentle, his surface appearance was also elegant, and gentle, smiling all day posing a harmless human appearance, but people on this circle knew, this man's scheming was deep, his background complex, whoever dared to offend him, he absolutely had the means to crush them. 
Xie Shi Qi's mind was punctured, she immediately took her hand back in panic, using them to cover the hair around her ears instead. She then smiled and said. Mr. Yu, you think too much, I just see him looking very uncomfortable, so I want to give him a glass of water to drink. Really? Yu Qian smiled and came closer, whispered in her ears with a low voice, Ji Ran never have a plan to find a girlfriend, you'd better not have any idea about him. Since the play is finished, it is better to get out of the play as soon as possible. What do you think? Having said his piece, he then gently hugged up the man on the sofa, causing Xia Shi Qi's eyes to widen in surprise before quickly tuned her head away. When Ji Ran woke up, he found himself lying in his bedroom bed. It was just dawn, but his biological clock made him habitually get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. His head felt painful because of hangover. Ji Ran rubbed his temple, then quickly finished washing himself, after changing his clothes, he went to the gym next door to do his daily morning exercise. The morning exercise consisted of doing a few familiar karate moves, fist punching, legs kicking, his movement was extremely handsome, the white clothes and the black belt between his waist outlined the tension in his body, making him look like a ferocious beast in the forest, as long as someone dared to get close to him, he could absolutely use one punch to break their nose. He was like a beautiful leopard, with his near-perfect body line, looking very slender, and yet hiding an amazing explosive force. Yu Qian stood at the door, always smiling to appreciate his movements. He waited until he finished the whole set of exercise, then handed over a towel and a long prepared hot milk to him, saying. Today is the beginning of the holiday given to you by the company, why are you still up so early? Ji Ran took the towel, wiped his face, shook his arm, drunk his milk, and said. Getting up early is a good habit, right? By the way, what's the plan for today? Yu Qian saw a few drops of milk stains on his lips and chuckled, reaching out to help him wipe it, then said. The nearby seaside has a resort, the scenery is also good, really quiet, and it has an open.air swimming pool that you like, want to go there to relax. Ji Ran who was completely unbothered by Yu Qian's previous action finished drinking milk, and gave a quick pat on the other man's shoulder. Good idea, I'd like to swim. After breakfast, the two of them set out together, with Yu Qian driving the car and Ji Ran sat in the passenger seat, listening to a song leisurely. While listening, Ji Ran couldn't help but ask. When will my next filming begin? Yu Qian looked back at him, his eyes full of helplessness. This is just the start of your holiday, and you are already so restless. Ji Ran played with his hair carelessly. Holiday is so boring, might as well go on filming. Next time, you can go apply to the company, not to give such a long holiday. You are the only star who has applied for a shortened holiday with the company. Ewing smiled, shook his head, and said, the next play is a SCI.fi theme, you're going to be a prince of the empire, it's your first SCI.fi movie, it's challenging. Recharge your energy first, wait for March. Talking about filming, Ji Ran was immediately excited. Great, I like SCI.fi theme, I'll go back to see the script several times. The car just turned to the corner, they suddenly saw a truck which seemed to have a brake failure, approaching fast in their direction. Dot be careful. Yu Qian quickly turned the steering wheel and slammed on the brakes, when he saw they were going to crash with the truck, he immediately leaped to protect Ji Ran's body, putting Ji Ran in the protection of his embrace. There was a loud bang sounding in their ears, and their body felt so painful to the point of making them losing consciousness, the overwhelming sprinkle of broken glass pierced their skin, and their vision turned as red as blood. Before completely losing his consciousness, the only thing Ji Ran remembered thinking was. Life really is filled with more drama and tragedy than in the movies, we were just casually driving out to relax ourselves, how can suddenly become involved in a car accident? 
underscore 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 please note that English is not my first language and this is not beta.ed therefore there might be some grammatical errors here and there. Also, I don't know Chinese, like at all, so this translation might not be completely accurate. New chapter will be added in a few hours. Chapter 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 02 Reborn, B, G Ran woke up to the sound of some weird voices. As the sound began to gradually cleared up, he recognized it was actually a mechanized female voice with an emotionless tone. The voice said, Queen, your majesty was still in the middle of a military meeting, but he have learned the news about your premature delivery, and is heading for the imperial palace now. Then came a woman's gentle voice. Yes. Your majesty. Queen. Is someone watching TV? Ji Ran felt a bit unsure, he remembered he and his broker were driving on his holiday and then encountered an unlucky accident. According to normal logic, at that time their injuries should not be light, so he should be in hospital right now. But why were these strange conversations happening here? Was the patient in this ward watching TV? G. Ran opened his eyes, hoping it would make whoever it was making those voices to turn their volume down. Unexpectedly, as soon as he opened his eyes, a woman's face appeared in his sight. The woman looked very beautiful, with skin as white as jade, a small exquisite figure, a pair of bright and clear black eyes, and thick black curls scattered around her head. Although her hair was a bit messy, her facial expression looked slightly pale, but her body still gave off a kind of gentle aura, prompting people to like her even at first glance. To Ji Ran's surprise, the woman was very close to him, it felt like he had shrunk into a baby size and was carried in her arms. The woman gently stroked his head, and smiled when she saw him opening his eyes. Shi Wei, be good, father will come soon to see you. Ji Ran. Dot. It's not a TV show, it's a nightmare. Ji Ran stretched out his hand, wanting to bite on it to make himself sober, however, tragically, as a newborn baby he had no teeth, so even if he put his hands in his mouth he had nothing to bite it with. The woman smiled as she saw the baby in her bosom trying to push his small hand into his mouth. She gently took his hand back, and said. He must be hungry, quick, bring me some food to give to him. Yes, queen. The robotic female voice answered, then, immediately a small silver trolley rolled automatically to the bedside. The woman took a bottle of best quality baby nutrition milk from the trolley, poured it in a similar bottle dot like device, and then stuffed the tip into G. Ran's mouth while encouraging softly. Eat it. G. Ran. Dot. This nightmare is terrible. G. Ran really wanted to call his broker over to shake him awake, but in his memory, he could remember very clearly the full dot of dot blood appearance of his agent after that accident. His wounds were even more serious than Ji Ran himself, therefore right now he should be in a coma. Perhaps my injuries were too heavy it's causing me to have some brain damage, that's why I have this strange dream. Ji Ran struggled to force himself to wake up from this nightmare, but still, nothing changed. Instead, this dream got even more complicated as a man suddenly opened the door and came into the room. The woman saw him and immediately rejoiced. Your Majesty. The man walked closer to the bedside, reached out a hand to hold her, and said softly. Anna, it's been hard on you. How did you suddenly have premature birth? Are you okay? I'm all right. Queen Anna smiled and said, the doctor came in time, the operation was very smooth, and the child is healthy. Then that's good. Come, show me the child, said His Majesty with a sigh of relief. The shrinking version of Ji Ran was transferred to His Majesty's bosom. Ji Ran took a careful look at the man with his big eyes, 
and found out that this man is still very young, had a handsome and tough features, with a powerful yet kind aura. The man's eyes became extremely soft as he looked at the baby in his arms and pinched his cheek gently. Now Ji Ran really felt like crying. Because their touches were real and not like a dream at all. These two people's arms, their breaths, he could really feel them, especially when his majesty pinched him, his face could clearly feel the man's powerful fingers. The king hugged his son for a moment, before returning him to the queen's hands. He asked, Craig, is the expert in charge of genetic identification here yet? A man in uniform came forward respectfully and said gravely. Answering your majesty, Professor Brown has just taken his people to General Byron's home to give genetic identification to his newly born son when Queen's premature delivery information reached him, they are on the way to the palace now, and are expected to arrive in one minute. His Majesty Trand frowned slightly. General Byron of the Star Corps. Was his baby born today too, yes. Craig replied, the time of birth was three o'clock in the afternoon, five minutes before the big prince. What is the result of his appraisal? Alpha male. Just as Craig finished saying this, the ring on his finger suddenly lit up and immediately reported. Your Majesty, Professor Brown and his people have reached the entrance of the palace, and now are currently stopped by the royal guard. Tran nodded and said, let them in. A moment later, three people came in together, wearing a clean white coat, led by a man wearing glasses with gray hair, apparently they were the so dot called expert, they came forward respectfully and saluted. Your Majesty. His Majesty Trand waved his hand and said humbly. Do genetic identification on the big prince. Yes, sir. Those three people hurriedly crowded around the newborn baby, the old man then took a needle, grabbed the child's arm and stabbed down. G ran. Dot. The sharp stinging coming from his arm was indeed the painful feeling of a needle piercing one's skin. The real pain seemed to be telling him clearly. It is not a dream, but a more terrifying reality than a dream. Logically, scenes and dialogue should not be so clear in dreams, and dreams were often happened incoherently, but now, Ji Ran discovered that that the looks and sounds of everyone around him were very clear, and their dialogue very complete, as if they were immersive. Did I die in that car accident? And then reborn again, with my past memory intact. If that was the case, then it would explain his current situation. But what he could not understand was, that although he could understand the people around him, many of their words had no clear meaning. This seemed to be a strange world, at least in his knowledge, he had never heard of any dynasty or foreign royal family that had to do genetic identification right after birth, and he also had no clue what's the meaning of that alpha result. The old man divided the blood taken into two halves, one half was stored, and the other half was put into an instrument for testing. The big screen on that instrument showed weird numbers and graphics, much like a DNA gene chain that he once learned in biology class, and though G. Ran didn't know what those numbers and graphs mean, but he could still recognize the letters written on the identification result, Omega. What the hell is this? Your Majesty, the result showed that the big prince is an Omega male. The old professor said excitedly with bright eyes, and his mental strength reached 120, for a newborn baby, such high mental strength is extremely rare. The old man is really excited, so the result of the appraisal seems to be good. His Majesty, however, did not show a slightest pleased look, he only nodded calmly, and said, I understand, call the people from Omega Protection Association to register his data. Not long after, three more people came into the room, wearing uniformed white clothes, presumably the so. Called, Omega Protection Association. They did not only enter the detailed result of his genetic identification into the database, but also took the big prince's fingerprints, pupil detail, and other information, all of them were recorded. Then His Majesty took out a platinum dot gold card, grabbed his son's hand and pressed it on the card. G. Ran didn't know what it's for, but as soon as his hand pressed down on it, the card emitted a soft platinum dot colored light with a line of small characters on it, seemingly very high dot end. 
The king returned the card and the child back to the queen, saying, Shi Wei's identity card will be kept by you for the time being. Yes, your majesty. The queen took her son, and saved the card carefully. Ji Ran finally realized that the platinum dot gold card must be his identification card that he was just born, but he not only had to do genetic identification, but also had to use his fingerprints to make an identity card, this really is a very strange world. The group of people gathered around the newly dot born prince to register all kinds of data, and then left after finishing their work, leaving only three person there, the baby, his majesty and the queen. Queen Anna was evidently fond her son, tenderly coaxing him in her arms. On the other hand, His Majesty Tran seemed not very happy, looking at the baby who was nestled in Anna's bosom. Tran reached out and touched his son's head, sighing softly. What's the matter, Your Majesty? Anna saw him sighing and asked hesitantly, Shi Wei is an Omega, you. You don't like it. Tran was silent for a moment, before finally whispered. How can it be? This is our first child, of course I like it. Only then would Anna calmed her heart down, gently holding the baby's small hands. Seeing this scene, Trand also could not help but smile, stretching out his hand to hold his wife and son's hands in his bigger one. This view gave off a very wonderful feeling, the child's hand was gently held by the mother, and then both of their hands were covered by the father's generous and powerful palm, three hands together, is this what it feels like to have a family? Ji Ran could not help but felt moved. God really did treat him fairly, after experiencing a car accident, he gave him a new opportunity to live, also allow him to finally have the parents he never had. In his previous life, he grew up in an orphanage and didn't know who his parents were, so he never knew the warmth of home. When he was a child, every time he saw some children with their parents, he always felt particularly envious. When he grew up, he tried to find his parents, but eventually he found nothing. No father, and no mother, this was his deepest regret. Now he had become a child, it didn't matter what kind of world this was, at least, he finally had his own father and mother. Although there were a lot of unfinished business in his original world, like the fact that he had just won the Best Actor Award, which made him still very unwilling to let go, but it's not like he had any other choice. He didn't know how to go back, and in addition of the very obvious fact that he was just a newborn baby right now, he also had the identity as a big prince, if someone found out something was wrong with him, he might be taken and sliced open in the name of research. Now that I need to do it all over again, I'll just try to start over, Ji Ran thought optimistically, after all, he played so many roles in his last life, acting as a good child should not be difficult. But he had to figure out what Omega meant as soon as possible. He could see that his majesty father did not seem too pleased to know that he was an Omega. Please note that English is not my first language, and this is not Beta. Ed, therefore there might be some grammatical errors here and there. Also, I don't know Chinese, like at all, so this translation might not be completely accurate. T slash N, in case you are confused, Ji Ran and Shi Wei is the same person. Ji Ran is his name in his last life and Shi Wei is his name in this current life. Anyway, Ji Ran will not be used much after this chapter. I actually want to change his name to something more Western since everyone else has Western name, but I couldn't find a Western equivalent for his name. Feel free to tell me if you know. What do you think about the story so far? Chapter 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Thank you for proofreading this. Underscore 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 chapter zero three. Rebirth, C, the baby's daily life felt incredibly boring. There was nothing to do every day except for eating and sleeping. Fortunately Ji Ran was an actor that had great adaptability, so he soon became accustomed to his new name, Shi Wei, and his new identity as the first prince. He had also figured out where the mechanized female voice he heard yesterday came from, 
it actually originated from Queen Anna's AI, artificial intelligence, housekeeper, Bo Air. The technology in this world was more developed than his original world, even beyond what he had imagined his original world's future would be like. The AI housekeeper, Bo Air, did not have any entity, she was only an invisible intelligence center that existed in Queen Anna's sleeping quarters to take care of the queen's daily life. Every day she would follow a certain schedule to send a small trolley of nutritious meals to the queen's bedside, and when someone approached the room, she would automatically activate a layer of electronic protection in front of the door, preventing them from disturbing the queen. If other people wanted to visit the queen, they must get the queen's consent first. Only then would Bo Air open the door for them. In addition, whatever activities the queen wanted to do, Bo Air immediately tried to assist her master in doing. For example, if the queen wanted to go out with her child to bask in the sun, then Bo Air would help her to open the balcony door, as well as preparing a comfortable chair for her. If the queen felt hot, then Bo Air would immediately turn the room's temperature down. If the queen wanted to eat fruit, a trolley filled with chopped fruits would immediately be delivered to her. Shi Wei thought it was quite amazing. Queen Anna lived a very enjoyable life, anything she wanted she could have, she lived every day like a god. But on the other hand, she stayed in the palace all day, almost completely isolated from the outside world. Except for her occasional meetings with the king, she had no interaction with other people. It was impossible for Shi Wei to learn more about this world, because every day he was being held in the arms of this isolated mother of his. So far, the only things he knew were. He was the first son of Queen Anna and King Trent, the first prince of the empire, and that he was an Omega male. Anything else he still did not know, even the meaning of Omega is still unclear for him. Seven days after Shi Wei came into this world, the queen's palace finally had its first visitor. At that time, Shi Wei was nestled in Queen Anna's bosom, drinking a bottle of nutritious milk, when Bo Air suddenly talked in her mechanized voice. Queen, Prince Berg wants to see you. Anna was surprised, and said. Berg is back. Let him come in. Prince Berg. Who is this? Shi Wei turned his head curiously, opening his eyes and looking towards the doorway. Soon, he saw a slender man come in. The man was dressed very casually, wearing only a simple white shirt and slacks, a gentle and kind smile adorning his face. Queen, I heard that Shi Wei was born early. I just returned to the palace, so now I have come here to see him. The man had a soft voice, he stood two meters away from the queen, looking at the baby in her arms. Shi Wei thought the man looked very delicate, but without appearing weak in the slightest. He had that kind of gentle temperament that would make other people feel like they were being grazed by a spring breeze, so peaceful and calm. The man turned his gaze to the queen, smiled, and asked, the queen suddenly had premature delivery, is your body okay? Queen Anna smiled and answered. I'm fine despite this premature delivery, although there were some accidents, but the child was born very healthy. Do you want to hold him? Yes, please. Berg stretched out his hand to hold the child, then looked down at the baby who was now in his arms, and said, this child has really big eyes and looks very lively. Anna smiled. Your brother King said that this child is a bit like you. Both of you are Omegas, but when you were born, your mental strength test results exceeded 100. Really? His test results are also so high. Berg touched Shi Wei's head thoughtfully and asked, where's brother? His majesty has been very busy recently, it seems something is happening in the military, I have not seen him for several days. Oh. Berg looked down at the child, and fell silent for a moment, before saying, right, I have a little present for Shi Wei. He took out a silver necklace from his pocket, with a blue water dot drop shaped pendant on it, it emitted a soft glow in the light, which made it look very beautiful. This is a protection charm, hopefully it will bring good luck to Shi Wei. Berg put the necklace on Shi Wei's neck, then returned the child to the queen. Anna hugged her son, grabbed his little hand, and said, Shi Wei, thank uncle for the gift. 
Shi Wei shook his small hand to express his thanks. Anna couldn't help laughing. Good boy, really clever. However, at that moment, Berg's gaze suddenly turned focused, he looked at the child in Anna's bosom and asked. He can understand what we are talking about. Anna frowned. How can it be? He was born only a week ago, there's no way he could understand anything. Berg did not speak, he only kept on staring at Shi Wei. Shi Wei suddenly felt a little regret. It seemed like this uncle wasn't very simple. Shi Wei was just responding subconsciously, but he was actually able to sense that something was not right. Thinking of this, Shi Wei immediately shook both of his hands, making a, wants to be hugged, gesture, reaching out his hands in his uncle's direction. Seeing this silly but cute action, Berg also could not help but laugh. Yes, maybe I'm thinking too much. Queen, I have to go back now, I'll come again another day to see him. Only after his uncle left did Shi Wei finally feel relieved. He took his hands back, and snuggled into his mother's bosom once again. He really liked the gentle scent coming off Queen Anna. Being in a mother's embrace somehow gave him a rare feeling of safety in this strange new world. From the conversation between the two adults before, he could conclude that Uncle Berg must be the king's brother, his own uncle. He's also an Omega, although he didn't look any different from other men except for his more delicate looks. So what was the point of being judged after birth? What is the difference between Alpha and Omega? Shi Wei did not understand, and was too tired to think further about it, so he just closed his eyes and went to sleep. For the next few days, Uncle Berg came to see him every day. Once, Queen Anna was feeling sleepy and wanted to nap, so Berg offered to take Shi Wei outside. Queen Anna agreed without hesitation. After all, the palace was a very safe place, and the child also had Berg to look after him, so she didn't need to worry. While his uncle was carrying him out of the palace, Shi Wei discovered that the imperial palace was actually much larger than he imagined. There were rows upon rows of magnificent-looking white buildings, with a unifying sign on each of them, Almost every building was decorated with a lot of shiny dots, which would form the shape of a constellation when connected. From time to time, people in white military uniforms would walk through the royal palace, presumably they were the royal guards. Berg brought Shi Wei to his palace. In Shi Wei's opinion, his uncle's palace was very special. It was a bit unusual because there was no luxurious decor there. Instead, the place was filled with many strange metal machines, it almost felt like walking into a manufacturing plant. Shi Wei looked around curiously, and Berg took him to the couch, then sighed, Shi Wei, to be born into the royal family, I really don't know whether you are lucky or unlucky. Shi Wei pretended not to understand, using his small hands to play with the blue necklace hanging on his neck. Berg continued. If you were Alpha, as the first prince of the empire, you would surely inherit his majesty's throne. Unfortunately, you are an Omega. You can only stay in the palace like me, and when you reach adulthood, his majesty will choose the right Alpha to marry and have children with you. Shi Wei's hand suddenly paused. Wait, did he hear it wrong? Getting married and having children. Alpha and Omega can marry and have children. Who will be the one to give birth then? Since I'm an Omega, it should be the Alpha, right? But Berg stopped at this critical moment, he looked down at the child in his lap and said. Your eyes actually got wider, are you curious about what I was saying? Shi Wei. Dot. Berg continued. If you understand, extend your right hand. If you don't understand, extend your left hand. Shi Wei stretched out both of his hands. Berg smiled, grabbed the child's hands, and whispered, I wish you would grow up quickly, I wish you could understand what I'm saying, so that I can teach you about a lot of things, and maybe you will be able to accomplish the dreams that I failed to achieve. Uncle Berg seemed to be lost in thought. Although he was smiling, it could not hide the lost expression showing on his face. Shi Wei felt a little puzzled. He focused his ears and began to listen carefully. Berg then went on to say. I like you, 
your mental strength, incredibly, scored above 100. Ordinarily, even children from royal and military families usually only have around 60 mental strength. Do you know what this means? This means that if we were alpha, we would be able to manipulate the empire's strongest S.class intelligent machine armor. Those simple and muscle.brained alphas would have no strength to fight us. Right now, in the entire empire, there are only few people who can control S.class armor, and except for His Majesty, all the other ones are military generals. Unfortunately, Omegas can't join the military. Even if you are a prince, you still don't have the qualifications to get an advanced level machine armor, the only thing you can do is to study about them secretly. Shi Wei finally understood the reason behind his uncle's bad mood, it was probably because of his wasted talent. He was very interested in machine armor, and those odd metals in his room were the machine armor he had developed. According to him, only a few people could have S.class armor, the highest level of intelligent machine. The development process of those S.class armors must be very complex. His uncle who was working alone obviously would be unable to complete it, and that was why he felt lost. Because his talent became useless. And that's only because he was born as an Omega. Shi Wei suddenly had a bad feeling. According to Uncle Berg, an Alpha Prince can inherit the throne, while an Omega Prince's only option was to marry and have children when they entered adulthood. He is also an Omega, so wouldn't he be like Uncle Berg? In the future only able to stay in the palace until the day His Majesty arranged a marriage for him. Wasn't that the same as becoming a tool for a political marriage? But it doesn't matter, Shi Wei thought optimistically, I'm only a newborn right now, far from adulthood. He was sure that later he could use his accumulated life experiences and his ability to understand the conversations around him, and slowly look for opportunities to change his destiny. That one afternoon, one month after Shi Wei was born, a strange woman came to the palace to visit Queen Anna. In contrast with Queen Anna's black hair, dark eyes, and gentle temperament, the woman who had just arrived had a long blonde hair, eyes as blue as sky, and a very decisive voice, obviously a really straightforward person. Anna seemed delighted to see her. She immediately took her to the sitting dot room, and asked the AI housekeeper to pour a cup of hot tea and prepare a table full of fruit for her. Strangely, the woman also held a child in her arms. When Anna's sight fell on the child, she quickly rushed to hold him, the expression on her face was so full of love, as if she was looking at her own son, Grace, this is your and Admiral Byron's son. So cute. Grace smiled and answered, yes, he was born on the same day as His Majesty the Prince, only five minutes earlier. I would have liked to bring him here earlier to visit the Queen and the First Prince, but was unable to find the opportunity. However, I remember that today the King and all the generals would go to have dinner together, so I think the Queen must be quite bored, that's why I took him here. We are not disturbing you are we. There are only two of us here, you don't have to be polite. Anna smiled and said, right, what's his name? His name is Claire. Claire, that sounds good. He's an alpha, right? I'm sure he will grow up strong like his father, and become a good general in the future. Anna held Claire in her arms for a while until her arms finally became tired. She then put him in Shi Wei's crib and went together with Grace to eat some fruits. The two of them ate and chatted, exchanging experiences of giving birth to and caring for their children. Shi Wei did not have any interest in this topic, so he was bored. He turned his gaze to the little guy lying next to him and, at the same time, Claire also turned to look at him. Their eyes met, and Shi Wei found himself thinking how beautiful this child's eyes were, the color as blue as the sky, just like his mother's eyes. Claire, on the other hand, seemed to think the child in front of him looked very cute, so to express his affection, he took the initiative to go over and kiss Shi Wei's face. Shi Wei, dot. Too lazy to care about this little guy, Shi Wei turned away and ignored him. As a result, Claire, in order to make the other boy acknowledge his existence, actually came over and gave Shi Wei another kiss, this time right on his mouth. 
Shi Wei finally had had enough, he quickly pushed Claire away, and gave him a convenient punch with his fist. Little Claire, who was beaten, immediately opened his mouth and cried. Woa Woa Hu. The two mothers, who were eating fruit, looked back in surprise. They saw Claire, who was crying with his nose flushed red, while Shi Wei was sleeping with his eyes closed next to him. The two mothers looked at each other, silently wondering what could have happened. Meanwhile, Shi Wei secretly thought in annoyance, whose child is this, can you hurry and take him away? T slash N. I've changed the king's name to Trent since Trent really doesn't sound like a name, and it's more convenient for those who have read ABO Cadets, a story from the same universe as this. Chapter 4 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Proofread by Chapter 04 The truth, I, usually, if someone were to have a childhood friend who was born on the same day as them, people would think it was a lucky thing, especially when their mothers were very good friends as well. According to normal development, the two small children should have grown up together. They would become really good friends in the future, the kind that would stick with each other through thick and thin. But the problem was, although Shi Wei had a baby's appearance, he was reborn with a complete memory from his last life. His IQ was that of an adult man, and so, he was not interested in playing with children. Claire was really active as a child. He liked to move around a lot, especially when he was trying to get close to Shi Wei. BDNV Shi Wei's crib was large, which made it easier for Claire to crawl around. More often than not, Shi Wei would slap and push him to the side, but he never gave up. After he was pushed, Claire would roll a few laps, then try to climb back to Shi Wei's side, he would scratch at Shi Wei's neck, grasp Shi Wei's fingers, even come up to kiss Shi Wei's face sometimes, always trying in various ways to express his feeling to his favorite person. Shi Wei and it was getting on Eleven Way's nerves. Queen Anna and Mrs. Grace often saw the two children fighting in the crib. Shi Wei would come over with his fist raised, and always accurately hit on Claire's nose. Although a child's fist held no strength and it was not really painful, even after repeatedly being defeated and beaten by Shi Wei, Claire incredibly still persevered to climb and crawl in order to get close to Shi Wei. Grace could not resist saying, Claire seems to be very fond of the first prince, Anna smiled and said. Yes. I don't know what will happen when they grow up, but if they can get married, that would be great. She Wei. Dot. Wait, queen, don't you think something is very wrong here? Two boys getting married. Hearing this, Grace smiled and said. The first prince's marriage should be his majesty's decision, right? And when he reaches adulthood, it will be up to the Omega Association to see the genetic match for him. Our family's Claire might not be that lucky. Anna's smile gradually faded, she bowed her head and said. You are right, she weighs marriage, I have no say in it that even though I am his mother. Seeing her depressed expression, Grace reached out and held her hand, comforting her gently, Queen, no one knows what will happen in the future. Even if they do not end up as a pair, I believe that these two children will still be able to be good friends. Anna looked back at the children who were fighting in the crib and smiled, I hope so. Grace, I have nothing to do every day in the palace, so if you have time, please bring Claire over to play. Grace smiled and said, of course, I will visit the queen more often. Grace and Queen Anna were very close friends, and she often brought her son along to visit the queen. So, in Shi Wei's memory, almost all of his early childhood was spent doing a hand dot to dot hand combat with Claire. Claire, this little guy, was really annoying. It was as if he thought of Shi Wei as a very fun toy. Every time he saw Shi Wei, his eyes would light up, and he'd try to kiss and hug him. Shi Wei really wanted to kick him down. However, his crib had a very high guardrail so his goal of kicking the other baby down could not be realized for now. The only thing Shi Wei could do was to endure it reluctantly. Fortunately, this nightmare soon came to an end because Queen Anna was pregnant again. In her pregnancy this time, Anna's morning sickness was very fierce, so she simply could not take care of her son. 
Shi Wei was then placed in His Majesty Trent's palace temporarily. It was Shi Wei's first visit to Trent's palace. The towering buildings looked magnificent, and it was evidently much more spacious than the Queen's chambers. The palace was divided into three parts. The living room, the reception room and the study. The living room had a silver dot white metal door which was locked with a series of passcodes, obviously. His Majesty would meet some important officials here, so confidentiality measures had to be taken. The bedroom's layout was very simple, it only consisted of a very large bed and matching bath facilities. One could see that Trent was not a person addicted to material comforts, as his daily life was actually very thrifty. However, the place Shi Wei was most interested in was His Majesty's study room. The study room was the approximate size of a stadium, and the walls surrounding it were all filled with an immense collection of books. Those thick books were made of soft materials and were as light as a feather when held. In addition, the large computer in the center of the room also stored many electronic versions of books, in short, the book storage capacity of His Majesty's study room was almost comparable to a large library. It was obvious that His Majesty was very fond of reading. Usually, when he had nothing to do, he would stay in the study room to read. Shi Wei, who was nestling in his arms, looked around in wonder. Seeing his son looking very curious about the books, Trent couldn't help but hold his little hand and say, Shi Wei, father will teach you how to write your name, okay? Shi Wei excitedly answered, yes, father. Incredibly, even though he was only eight months old, Shi Wei had already learned to speak during the time spent with his father. Maybe it is because Hu is born with high mental strength. Hearing the child shout out, Father, in his tender voice, Trent was so surprised, what did you just call me? Say it again. Father, cried Shi Wei. As a father, of course Trent was very happy. He smiled and squeezed his son's face softly, good. Shi Wei was also very happy to have such a gentle and loving father. In his previous life he did not even dare to dream about having one. It was a pity that as a king, Trent was very busy and spent only one or two hours a day looking after Shi Wei. Most of the time, Shi Wei was left with his machine armor. His machine armor was called the Lion King. According to Uncle Berg, this should be one of the Empire's few S.class intelligent machine armor. Its IQ was almost comparable with a human, and it was capable of carrying on a conversation fluently with Shi Wei. Not only that, it can also change into a variety of different solid shapes. Shi Wei was very interested in this kind of transformable, high-intelligence machine armor. However, he did not dare speak to the armor until he was clear about the specific functions and IQ of the armor, because it would be troublesome if he were suspected. Fortunately, there were numerous books in His Majesty's study. Relying on his excellent understanding and imagination, Shi Wei followed His Majesty's action and opened a few books. Bit by bit, he gradually became able to read some of the words. Fortunately, no one would become overly suspicious if they saw a child turning pages in one book after another. Even His Majesty would only think that his son was playing with the books like they were toys. But, in actuality, Shi Wei was checking out the details of the world he found himself in. According to the records in the book, they were presently in the cosmic era, and the place humanity lived on now was no longer Earth. This era used a cosmic calendar to calculate dates. Shi Wei was born in cosmic calendar year 774, while the Empire was founded in year 576. The cosmic calendar began the year that humanity moved away from Earth into the universe. The Empire was founded nearly 200 years later. At that time, there was an outbreak of a large dot-scale war among the humans, it was known as the Battle of the Isavil Galaxy. This battle caused countless casualties until, eventually, the humans divide themselves into two major regimes. The Lacy Empire regime centered on the Cepheid Galaxy, and the Strandian Federation regime centered on the Phoenix Galaxy. Shi Wei's country was the Lacy Empire, located in the Cepheid Galaxy, and His Majesty Trent was the seventh emperor of the empire. The empire and the Strandian Federation had been fighting for years, 
and the Yisavil galaxy was the junction of the two powerful forces. It was a dangerous place where cosmic sandstorms could occur at any time. At present, the Legion of Glory was guarding the border. Last year, a war broke out on the border between the Lacey Empire and the Strandian Federation, so His Majesty Trent was so busy that he did not have time to visit the newly dot born prince for months in a row. In other words, although Shi Wei was a noble prince, his empire was not an empire of peace, and a hostile force was eyeing it from the distance. After figuring out the country and world's background, Shi Wei began searching for data on Omegas. Fortunately, like the saying goes, hard work will always pays off. Shi Wei finally found a book introducing Omega-related data. The book was titled, About Alpha, Beta, Omega. Detailed knowledge of the three, and the author was Dr. Brown from the Imperial Central Hospital. Dr. Brown, isn't that the old professor who took his blood the day he was born? Since it is a book written by an expert, it must be very scientific. Shi Wei opened the book with a curious feeling and his three views were immediately refreshed. The book said that, in order to adapt to the new environment during the long migration into the universe, human beings experienced physical changes, resulting in three new sub-genders. Alpha, Beta, and Omega. Alpha were natural leaders, strong, high in spiritual power, like to conquer, and possessive. Most of the generals and rulers of the empire were alphas, the best leaders in the human race. However, alphas could not conceive and bear offspring, so they must be paired with a beta or omega. The majority of human beings consisted of betas, and their abilities were mediocre in all aspects. Although betas are capable of giving birth to offspring, their fertility rate is low, their birthing process was very difficult, and the children born have a high mortality rate. Omegas comprise the smallest percentage of the population, but have the strongest fertility. Omegas, when paired with alphas, could give birth to a strong lineage of children. After they turned 18 years old and became adults, omegas would have an erratic estrus every year. It was difficult for omegas to maintain self-control during estrus. They instinctively yearn for an alpha's embrace, to be marked, and taken as their position. They will also emit a sweet pheromone that will attract any alphas in close proximity. After being completely marked by an alpha, if they did not use contraception, the probability of pregnancy occurring for the omega is as high as 99%. Shi Wei had some doubts about what this mark could entail, and continued to flip through the book's pages. As a result, the author of the book simply put an illustration there, followed by a large text that explained the entire process of an alpha marking an omega in great details, with many explicit images. Bang, Shi Wei threw the book to the ground. He thought, God must be playing a big joke on me that I s it possible to cross back now. I really want to go back to my original world, to continue filming that science fiction movie. Even a movie script will not be this deceptive. Chapter 5 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Proofread by Chapter 05 The truth, too, Shi Wei found out that every assumption that he had made was wrong. When the monitoring results showed that he was an Omega, he was optimistic that Omega must mean a gifted child with high mental strength. When Uncle Berg said, you can only stay in the palace like me, and when you reach adulthood, his majesty will choose the right alpha to marry and have children with you, he also optimistically thought that the one who gave birth must be the alpha. Turns out, being too optimistic was not a good thing. Because, the truth was so cruel. It was actually omegas who had high fertility, and were protected as scarce resources. Even in adulthood, they would have to face the erratic annual estrus, and what the hell is this, will emit a sweet and seductive pheromone to attract alphas in close proximity. So this was why His Majesty did not look pleased to hear the results of his gender appraisal before, because an Omega Prince was evidently not as useful as an Alpha Prince. Alphas could fight and inherit the throne, while Omegas could only wait for adulthood to be married off to an Alpha and later gave birth to some children. Andy was expected to just follow these broken rules of society. What the hell is this? 
Did God's brain get drowned in some water? Shi Wei really wished that it was just a case of him taking the wrong script or going to the wrong filming studio. Surely, reality wouldn't be cruel enough to send him to such a wonderful world as this one. The world had six type of genders. Male alpha, female alpha, male beta, female beta, male omega, and female omega. Alphas could not get pregnant, for betas it would be difficult to conceive, while omegas are the most likely to conceive children. So, the ability to conceive had nothing to do with being female or male, but it was determined by their A.B. O status. Shi Wei felt like his three views were suddenly completely overturned. While looking at the pictures in the book, Shi Wei thought of his future self who would have to be completely marked by an alpha, and couldn't help but shudder. He had actually turned into a fertile omega that was destined to be pressed down by another man. Dot this wonderful world, how to live in it. Meanwhile, Trent, who was in the living room reading E. Mails, suddenly saw Shi Wei lying down with his face down in front of the sofa. The image was shown from the big screen he had placed in the middle of the room, which was connected with the one in the study room. Trent was puzzled, he hurriedly contacted Lion King's intelligence center, and asked, what happened to Shi Wei? The mechanized voice of Lion King answered seriously. Answering His Majesty, the prince today has been playing with some books in the study room. However, not long ago, he suddenly threw one of the books to the ground, then also fell down himself. Dot. Looking at the image of his son who was lying motionless on the ground, His Majesty couldn't help but feel a bit worried and said, check whether he is hurt anywhere. Actually, the study is paved with thick and soft carpet, and the sofa Shi Wei played on was the very short type, so even if he fell down he wouldn't be hurt. However, as a father, of course Trent would still worry about the condition of his child. His Majesty Trent immediately set aside all of his affairs, and headed to the study room. When he arrived, he quickly rushed to Shi Wei's side and hugged him. Logically speaking, normally when a child fell, they would not be able to hold their cries, but it's different with Shi Wei. He rarely cried since his birth. Trent smiled as he took a glance at the poor child in his arms who looked like he was in a bad mood. He touched the boy's head and asked softly. What's wrong? Are you hurt? Shi Wei shook his head, no. Trent picked up the book on the floor and flipped it open. He was immediately greeted with the sight of images detailing how alphas would mark omegas. The scale of those pictures was very large, and some parts were even painted vividly. Trent frowned slightly, put the book back on one of the shelves, and said, Shi Wei is too young, some books are not suitable for him to see. Rearrange the books in the study room all over again, then find some children's fairy tale books for him. Yes, your majesty. The efficiency of the smart machine was very high, and soon most of the books on the shelves were moved to higher places. Lion King also found a stack of fairy tale books and put them in front of His Majesty Trent. Trent sat down on the couch, propped Shi Wei on his knees, picked up the book of fairy tales and smiled, look at this, Shi Wei. Shi Wei, dot. I don't want to see fairy tales, I just want some quiet. However, the emperor is full of love today, he actually held the book in front of Shi Wei, and began to read the story out loud. A long time ago, there lived a good elf in the Andromeda galaxy. The elf had a pair of colorful wings. Shi Wei was so sleepy that he closed his eyes. Seeing this, Trent who rarely had the opportunity to read books to his son felt his pride hurt a little. He asked Lion King seriously. Was the way I told the story uninteresting? The king's story was so interesting that the prince must have fallen asleep because he was comforted by it, Lion King said honestly. Trent nodded, feeling satisfied with his answer. He then carried his sleeping son back to bed, touched his head gently, and murmured, Sleep well, son. Shi Wei actually did not fall asleep, he was still struggling to digest what he just read from the book. This knowledge about Omegas, the more he thought about it the more creepy he felt. The book said that Omegas in Estrus would emit a strong pheromone odor, 
which would affect alphas and influence them to instinctively mark the omega in front of them. Shi Wei couldn't help thinking. Did I really travel to the world's distant future, and not some jungle-themed world? That autumn, Queen Anna gave birth to a little princess, named Alicia. She was a pale-skinned omega girl who almost died soon after her birth. Fortunately the doctors did their best to save her, and they succeeded. The poor little girl was put into an incubator, and would be cared for by a professional nurse 24-7. Trent also brought the finest pediatric specialist in the empire to look after and save the child at all costs. Looking at his faintly dot-breathing sister in the incubator, for the first time, Shi Wei finally realized what was truly meant when he read the description stating that Omegas have a very weak body, in one of the books. The number of Omegas was small to begin with, and combined with their high infant mortality rates, no wonder their number had been declining year after year. And Omegas were the only ones able to conceive offspring with the purest lineage. If the number of Omegas kept on declining, it would lead to a terrible negative growth rate in the empire's entire population and decreased quality in its bloodlines. As a result, because they were a scarce resource, Omegas were highly valued and would be protected from the moment of their birth. Like Shi Wei, the data of Princess Alicia was also registered by Omega Protection Association. Because her body is very weak, she had to stay in the incubator, so Queen Anna would often bring Shi Wei to visit her in the hospital. After a full six months, Alicia's body condition gradually began to improve, and she was finally allowed to be taken back to live in the palace. Shi Wei knew that his sister's condition was not good, so he really took care of her. Although at that time he was still a child, he could do small things like giving some toys to her. The feeling between these two siblings was very good, which made Queen Anna really happy. There was one thing Shi Wei felt curious about though. After his sister was born, Grace, who was previously so close with Queen Anna, unexpectedly never visited her. Shi Wei raised this question to Queen Anna. She smiled and replied, because Lady Grace is pregnant, she has no time to see me. Why, do you miss your good friend Claire? Shi Wei. Dot. Mother you are really funny. Why would he miss that brat Claire? Time passed quickly, and soon Shi Wei would be three years old. Children in the empire would not receive formal education before the age of three. However, Shi Wei knew how to do self.study, so it did not really matter to him. He would often find the opportunity to run to His Majesty's study, and read some books there. Since, in the previous life, he was used to reading and memorizing scripts, he now had a very good memory and was able to remember the things he had read in the books. He knew that stacking up on knowledge would only bring advantage and no harm to him. He had already accepted his fate of being born as a tragic Omega Prince in this strange world, but he could not accept the fate of his grown-up self who had to be marked in the future, so he must find a way to change his destiny. When Shi Wei was two and a half years old, Mrs. Grace gave birth to an Omega little boy. After she recovered, they became frequent guests in the palace once again. Of course, she would still take Claire, who was now also two and a half years old, to play with Shi Wei. Claire was learning to walk and talk now, so he did not roll around in Shi Wei's bed as he did when he was a baby. Little Claire wore a custom dot made white suit and a necktie, dressed like a little gentleman by his mother. Shi Wei found his staggering figure very funny, and thought, wearing such a get dot up, this child really looks like those dolls in a boutique house. When Claire saw Shi Wei, his eyes immediately became bright. He rushed happily to Shi Wei's side before asking, You are Shi Wei. Shi Wei nodded, Yes. Claire stretched out his hand and said, I have a present for you. Shi Wei took a look, and found the other boy holding a set of miniature toy armor that small children love to play with. It was only the size of a palm and could be assembled freely, however, Having seen his father's S.class armor, Shi Wei had little interest to small toys like this. Still, he took it from Claire's hand and said, Thank you. Seeing no change in his expression, Claire felt a little unsure, You don't like it. Shi Wei said, I like. Claire immediately cheered up. 
Not far from them, Queen Anna watched as Claire gave a present to his son, and could not help but smiled. Claire is really sensible. He is still so young, yet he already knows to give things to Shiwei. Gray said, yes, when he heard that I want to bring him to the palace, he was very excited. He immediately picked one of his most precious toys to give to Shiwei. Anna laughed, let's just let them play by themselves, we can go to the garden. After the two mothers left, Shiwei put the toy in his hands down and sat down on the couch, holding a book. Claire peered at him curiously and asked, what are you looking at? The blonde-haired and blue-eyed little guy leaned close to Shiwei. His soft hair was slipping over Shiwei's cheek and tickling it gently. Shiwei brushed his hair aside, raised the book in his hand, and replied, basic principles of piloting an armor, Claire was puzzled, what is that book? Shiwei flicked his head, and answered, it's a book that you can't read. Claire, dot. The despised Claire had to sit back silently. While playing with the toys in his hands, he would secretly glance at the book the first prince was reading. After returning home, Claire asked his mother curiously, what is the basic principle of piloting a machine? Gray smiled, touched her son's head and said, you are still too young, this is what alphas will learn after age 10. Claire wondered, isn't she way in Omega? Why does he read this book then? Grace explained, he should think that the pictures are very interesting to look at. It's a complicated book, so he can't possibly understand it. Oh. Claire thought about it and made a decision, I want to read the same book as she weigh. Grace reluctantly had to bring the book back to her son. Claire opened it, took a look, and immediately found out that his mother was very right, he really could not understand anything. The next day, he once again came to the palace with his mother. Shi Wei was reading a different book this time. Feeling curious, Claire approached him and asked, What book are you reading? It's not the same one as yesterday's book, right? Shi Wei stretched out his hand, Stay two meters away from me and don't bother me. Claire, dot. Claire who was pushed away couldn't help but wonder. Shi Wei has a pretty big strength, not at all like the weak dot and dot needs dot to dot be dot protected omega. Is the queen mistaken? The first prince is actually an alpha, right? T slash N. I feel quite bad for Claire in this chapter lol. Shi Wei is so cruel to him xd. Chapter 6 You are listening at novel full dot audio. Proofread by. Chapter 06. Childhood Sweetheart A, eh? Queen Anna and Lady Grace always had so many topics to talk about when it came to discussing Shi Wei and Claire's future fate. At first, when it was discovered that both Queen Anna and Lady Grace were pregnant, they were told that Claire's due date would be on June 22nd in the following year, while the expected date of Shi Wei was in June 29 th, there should be a one-week age difference between them, but who would have guessed that the two children would be born slightly prematurely instead? and end up being born on the same day. June 21st. That day happened to be the last day of Gemini constellation, and in the early morning, there was a rare Gemini meteor shower happening. It was as if the universe also wanted to celebrate their wonderfully linked fate. One year ago, the two small children could be found fighting in Shiwei's crib every day, with Shiwei's little fist always falling accurately on Claire's nose, while the abused baby was busy rolling around in the crib, always trying to get close to the other boy. Even later, after the two of them had learned to walk and talk, Claire still liked to follow Shi Wei around. His gaze would always trail after Shi Wei's figure in curiosity, taking in everything he did so that he could imitate him in his own home later on. Claire would take notes of all the books Shi Wei was reading, and then asked his mother for the exact same ones, even though most of the time he did not understand what they were about. He would also take the initiative to give many of his favorite toys to Shi Wei. Unfortunately, little did he know, Shi Wei actually had little interest in those toys. Almost every day, Grace witnessed her son following and trailing after Shi Wei, and could not help but sigh. She said, Claire really likes to be close to Shi Wei, but somehow his relationship with his own brother is not that good. Anna was puzzled and asked, his brother. 
I haven't seen him yet, but I heard that he is a very beautiful Omega. Claire doesn't like him. Grace shook her head, at home, Claire loves to play with all sort of toys by himself in his room. Also, he started having nightmares a while ago. He said there was so much blood in those dreams, and he couldn't see anything else but red there. I was afraid he would become cranky, so I usually take him here to play with Shi Wei. Hearing this, Anna couldn't help feeling worried, he is not even three years old yet, why would he have such strange dreams like that? Grace frowned, I don't know. I have consulted some experts before, and all of them said that these dreams are difficult to explain. It may have been due to his premature birth though, because Claire was also born with severe anemia. He even needed to be rescued once during the delivery, and it is a bad omen for an alpha to experience a rescue at birth. Anna took hold of her friend's hand and comforted her, don't think too much about it. You can see that Claire is very healthy now, I'm sure he will grow up in peace and good health too. Those were just nightmares, they shouldn't mean anything, right? Yes, I heard that children will sometimes see some things that they shouldn't see, but it will become better as they grow up. Grace smiled and continued, right, Queen Anna, on Claire's third birthday, I'm going to send him to a teacher to study, so he will not be able to come and visit you anymore. Anna nodded her head, I know, Shi Wei also will have to move out soon. According to the rules of the empire, children before the age of three should live together with their mother, and later, on their third birthday, they would finally begin their education. There was no kindergarten in the empire, so the children's education for the first two years would all be handled as a responsibility of the teachers chosen by their own family. Their teacher would teach them the basic knowledge of language, numbers, and mechanical things. Then, when they were five years old, they would be sent to school. Shi Wei and Claire would have their third birthday soon, and during the next two years after that, they would be placed under the care of their own respective teachers to study. Therefore, until their official enrollment to the Empire School when they reached five years old, they would no longer have the opportunity to meet. Claire had heard about this from his mother, and in his heart, he knew clearly that today would be the last time for him to see Shi Wei in the palace for a while, so he had carefully prepared a gift for the other boy. He looked at Shi Wei helplessly, and said, this is a present for you. I drew it personally so that you will always remember me. Shi Wei took a look at the object in Claire's hand. It was a picture of two children holding hands. The painting's title was written on the top. The best partner, and their names were scribbled above the children's heads. Claire, Alpha, Shi Wei, Omega. This kid actually put a question mark behind the Omega. Claire exclaimed seriously, Mom said we could see each other again in two years. So, in these two years, you can look at this picture every time you miss me. Shi Wei took the picture with a stiff face and said, Thank you. Shi Wei really had no interest in a child's drawing like this, and what's with this question mark behind the word Omega? Does he doubt my status as an Omega? That day, when it was time for them to leave the palace, it was obvious to see just how reluctant Claire was feeling. He kept on looking back at Shi Wei, as if he was trying to carve every precious detail of the other boy's image into his mind. And, although Shi Wei had been feeling annoyed at him all day, his heart couldn't help but softened a little at seeing Claire's actions. In any case, they could still be considered as childhood friends who grew up together. Claire also had always been good to him, giving him his favorite toys every day, and even though Shi Wei did not actually like those toys, Claire's pure intention and heart could be seen from them. In Claire's simple mind, he obviously thought of Shi Wei as a good friend, so Shi Wei also couldn't be too cold to him, lest he caused suspicion from others. Shi Wei thought for a while before finally saying, Claire, I also have a gift for you. Claire's eyes lighten up. What gift? Shi Wei took a piece of shiny red stone from his pocket and handed it to Claire, this is for you. Claire immediately held it tightly and said seriously, I will take good care of it. After he said this, he quickly ran back to Shi Wei and dropped a kiss on his face gently, thank you, Shi Wei. Shi Wei. Dot. 
Damn it, if I had known he'd do this, I never would have given anything to him, thought Shi Wei while wiping the little boy's saliva from his face. That night, Claire sat on the sofa, holding and studying the red stone Shi Wei had given to him earlier. But, no matter how hard he looked at the stone, he still could not figure out its use. When General Byron arrived home, he found his son playing with a rare thing in his hands and frowned, who gave you that stone? Claire felt a little afraid of his cold dot faced, serious father, and replied honestly, the first prince gave it to me. General Byron took the jewel and examined it, before returning it to Claire's hands a few seconds later. He said calmly, this is a very rare large dot capacity storage space which is produced only in the Lyra galaxy. It can also be used as a storage space for intelligent machine armor. This gift from the first prince is very precious, save it wisely, and don't lose it. Oh. Claire immediately hugged the stone in his bosom, holding on to it very carefully. He thought. Shi Wei is so nice to me, he even gave me such a precious gift. Little did Claire know, Shi Wei actually owned a few storage space stones like that, courtesy of His Majesty Trent, and his Uncle Berg. Shi Wei chose to give the red stone to Claire because he had learned about the value of the stone before. The storage stones, which were produced in Lyra Galaxy, can be used as a memory base for machine armor. The value and grade of a storage stone was determined by its size, and the one Shi Wei picked for Claire was of the largest size available, which made it naturally priceless. A grown-up Alpha would get his own machine armor later, so Claire would certainly need this storage stone for his armor in the future. Shi Wei would not give some childish little toys like Claire did, because he preferred to be practical in anything he did. On June 21 of this year, on the last day of the Gemini constellation, the Imperial Palace and the home of General Byron were both celebrating the third birthday of their respective children, Shi Wei and Claire. The next morning, Queen Anna sent Shi Wei to move to his own palace that had been arranged in advance for him. As a prince of the empire, he must live separately from his parents at the age of three. But, of course, he would have a full range of AI butlers to take care of his daily life. When Shi Wei entered the palace, one of the intelligent butlers opened his mouth and greeted him, Welcome back, master. This AI butler had a somewhat child-like voice, completely different from the regal lady voice of Queen Anna's personal AI housekeeper. Shi Wei asked curiosity, what's your name? The AI butler answered. Please give me a name, master. Shi Wei thought about it, then said. How about Kaka? It's good, master. Somehow, Shi Wei felt a bit funny listening to Kaka's childish voice talking in such a serious tone. Shi Wei sat down in one of the chairs in the room for a while, before he finally couldn't stop himself from asking, why hasn't my teacher arrived yet? Just as he finished saying this, a man's soft voice was suddenly heard answering his question, don't worry, I have come. Shi Wei. He looked up and saw Berg's smiling eyes glancing down on him. Shi Wei asked him in surprise, how are you ah, uncle? Berg walked towards him and sat down on the seat at his side, then said playfully, I have come here to teach you personally. You should feel honored. Shi Wei. Dot. Afterwards, Berg took out an e.reader screen in the size of an adult's palm, and put it down in front of Shi Wei. He opened the first page, and then explained, this is a list of the most commonly used words in the empire. Pick the words that you can recognize, and after that I will make a lesson plan based on the result. Shi Wei looked a little embarrassed as he glanced at the words in front of him. He actually already knew about these words, but he did not want to seem suspicious in front of his royal uncle, so he purposely picked simple words from the list, including Her Majesty, the Queen, his name, as well as sofa, bed, and other daily things he had come into contact with. After he finished, Berg looked at him and asked, you are only able to recognize these. Shi Wei nodded, yes. Berg smiled and touched his head, in this six months, you have to memorize all of them. Then, once you are able to, I'll teach you more things. Shi Wei nodded again, okay. This half a year's time was very boring for Shi Wei, 
because he had to act clueless every day, he also had to pretend to be naive and ask some questions to his teacher. During this period of time, Shi Wei finally realized that being a child, in fact, was not easy. Fortunately, his uncle never felt suspicious of him, instead, Berg always patiently explained the meaning of each word to him. Berg is actually a very good teacher, always very patient in working with a child like him, and his explanations were also done in great detail. Although the content of the lessons was something that Shi Wei had known since his early childhood, surprisingly, he also learned many new things from his uncle. This very talented Wang Shu, his teaching style was not the rigid type. While teaching about simple words and grammar, he would use many interesting allusions in his explanation. In this strange world, of course many of those allusions were new and interesting for Shi Wei, and so, Shi Wei would always listen to them with deep attention. Berg was also really invested in his research of machine armor's manufacturing, therefore, he would often tell machine armor-related stories to Shi Wei. This part of his lessons was what Shi Wei found most interesting, and he loved listening to them carefully. Shi Wei liked this Wang Shu of his, because somehow, being near Berg's body always filled him with a reassuring and comfortable feeling. In these two years, except for the occasional visits from His Majesty Trent and Queen Anna to check on his learning progress and well-being, most of Shi Wei's time was spent with Uncle Berg. His uncle told even the news of his mother's new pregnancy to him. His mother later gave birth to a baby girl who was named Shi Lin. The third princess is an Omega, and was said to have cried pretty loudly when she was born, a really lively baby girl. Shi Wei was very happy to have another sister, however, Berg actually sighed and said. Three successive Omega children, the pressure on your mother's back must be very heavy. An Omega can only have limited amount of children, and your mother is the queen, so she must to give birth to an alpha prince to inherit the throne. No wonder Queen Anna's expression was a little sullen lately. Apparently having three consecutive Omega children had put her under a lot of pressure. And the birth of a child would always leave a certain trauma to an Omega's body, therefore, she would need time to recover. She almost always stayed in the palace with her children. In these few years, she had given birth to three children, and during this time, the only connection she had with the outside world was through her interaction with her good friend, Grace. Thinking about this, Shi Wei couldn't help but feel distressed for his mother. That evening, he went to the queen's palace to see her. When Anna saw Shi Wei, she immediately smiled and walked to him, haven't seen you for a while, our Shi Wei actually has grown so tall. Her eyes glistened with unshed tears as she said this. Shi Wei hurriedly raised up his small hands and wiped at Anna's tears gently while asking her in a voice full of concern, Queen Mother, are you feeling better now? Anna moved to hug Shi Wei and answered softly, I'm fine, later, His Majesty also came to see the third princess. When he found Shi Wei there, he asked him, Shi Wei, how is your learning progress with Uncle Berg? Have you finished learning the contents of the book? Shi Wei said, It's going well, there is only the last one left. Anna put Shi Wei down, and asked, Your Majesty, has Berg's marriage been decided? Trent nodded, after Shi Wei's fifth birthday, once Berg finishes all of the lessons. The wedding will be set in the fall. Shi Wei. Dot L. Dot C. Shi Wei's three views problem that had long been forgotten suddenly resurfaced once again. Berg Wang Shu was apparently going to be assigned to an alpha by his majesty soon. Chapter 7 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Proofread by. Chapter 07 Childhood Sweetheart, B, not long after Shi Wei was born, Berg once took him to the palace and said, As an Omega Prince, you can only stay in the palace like me, and when you reach adulthood, his majesty will choose the right alpha to marry and have children with you. At that time, Shi Wei had yet to understand the meaning of these words, and optimistically thought that the one who would be giving birth must be the alpha. Now, however, he had figured out the rules of the world. If Uncle Berg were to be married, he would definitely be marked by an alpha and later expected to give birth to some children. Thinking of this, Shi Wei felt very unwilling. 
His uncle was a really good person, why should he be forced to marry and give birth to some Alpha's children? Why couldn't he be free to find and choose someone that he actually liked? When Shi Wei met Uncle Berg the next day, he couldn't help asking, Uncle, yesterday I heard father say that you are getting married. Berg was sitting on the couch, reading a book. When he heard this, he paused and answered calmly, Yes, the wedding has been decided, it's this year. Shi Wei asked, Have you seen the Alpha yet? I have, answered Berg. Shi Wei asked again, Do you like him? Dot Berg smiled and put down his book. He looked back at Shi Wei and said, It doesn't matter whether I like him or not. You are too young to understand this. As princes, a lot of things are beyond our control. You will learn to understand this as you grow up. Shi Wei, dot. Truthfully, Shi Wei did understand. Uncle Berg's marriage must be related to some kind of political reasons. The Alpha chosen by His Majesty certainly would not be someone from a simple family. The Alpha's family background must be prominent enough to warrant a beneficial relationship with the imperial family. Honestly speaking, this kind of political union was very common in monarchical countries. Not only the princes, the princesses' marriages also rarely happened as a result of their own decisions. The marriage of a royal family member was more like a transaction of power and political interest. Shi Wei knew about many countries' histories, and had long been aware of this. But, looking at Uncle Berg's calm expression, Shi Wei still could not help but feel that it was unfair. In these two years, he had gotten to know just how very talented his uncle is. It would be such a waste for him to be married off so early. Meanwhile, Berg had been watching Shi Wei, and seeing the helpless expression on his small face made Berg unable to hold back a small fawn chuckle from escaping his mouth. He picked Shi Wei up and seated him down on the sofa next to him, then said in a soft voice, You don't have to worry, I have personally investigated the Alpha that His Majesty has selected for me. He is a very honest man. I am a prince, so I think he will not dare to disrespect me after our marriage. I'll come back to visit you in the palace whenever I have the chance. Hearing this, Shi Wei's heart finally felt a bit soothed. He nodded, okay. Berg continued, Shi Wei, when you grow up, if there comes a time when you also have to enter a political marriage like me, you must remember to never yield yourself to your fate, you cannot lose your own sense of self. The two of us have higher mental strength than even some alphas, so take advantage of it. Don't waste the best genes that you have inherited as a member of the royal family. Berg paused and looked at Shi Wei, who was listening earnestly, and smiled slightly. He touched his head and continued, Everything I said today, you must remember. I'm sure you will understand what I mean when you grow up. Shi Wei had a mixed feeling about it, but still, he nodded and said, I'll note it down, Wang Shu. Time went by quickly, and in the blink of an eye, it was already June 21st, King Trent decided to celebrate Shi Wei's birthday in the palace. In Lacey Empire, the children would start receiving formal schooling once they turned five years old, so, a fifth birthday was quite an important event for them. That night, His Majesty Trent, Queen Anna, Berg Wang Shu, and the two princesses, Alicia and Shi Lin, all gathered in the palace to celebrate Shi Wei's birthday. A special custom dot made, big cake was prepared, with candles of five different colors placed on top of it, representing the fact that the first prince Shi Wei finally reached five years old that day. Anna held her one-year-old daughter in her bosom. Princess Shi Lin really liked to move around, and currently she was reaching out her hands, trying to grab onto the cake. Anna immediately took her hands back and smiled, don't move, wait until your prince brother finishes blowing out the candles. Trent also smiled and said, Shi Wei, don't forget to make a wish before you blow the candles. Shi Wei looked at the flickering candles in front of him, closed his eyes, and silently made a wish. Watching Uncle Berg's wedding day getting closer and closer, as a five-year-old child, Shi Wei simply had no power to change that. The only thing he could do was to silently wish for his uncle's happiness even after his marriage. 
He also wished for himself, for his fate to change, so he would not have to embark on this political marriage path as well. That autumn, because of His Majesty Trent's brother, Prince Berg's marriage, the whole capital city was permeated with a cheerful and festive atmosphere. A large red carpet had been laid at the entrance of the Imperial Palace, and a young Alpha could be seen driving a special machine armor through it, followed by a mighty bridal procession behind him, all was prepared in order to greet Prince Berg. Berg wore a white royal robe that day, which had been tailored to perfectly accentuate his tall and slender stature. The complex and gorgeous patterns lining the robe also highlighted Berg's noble identity and status. His uncle was dressed so beautifully, and yet Shi Wei's eyes remained harsh as he looked on at the proceeding. Shi Wei stood in the distance, helplessly watching as his uncle Berg walked out of the imperial palace with a smile on his face, and a horde of royal guards escorting him. Shi Wei looked at Berg's departing figure, his small fists clenched firmly by his side. Berg was Shi Wei's first teacher since he came to this world. In these two years alone, he had learned so many things from him, and in his heart, Shi Wei had come to really respect this uncle of his. However, he was only a powerless five-year-old now, there was nothing he could do except for hope that after Uncle Berg arrived in the Berg's family home, his alpha husband would treat him well. After Berg got married, Shi Wei was left without a teacher, so he spent most of his time all alone, reading in his room by himself. His uncle had given his miniature AI computer to Shi Wei before leaving, and for Shi Wei, it was undoubtedly a great asset, Berg's AI computer quality was very high, and it could even connect directly to the Imperial Central Library. Shi Wei used it to browse through the Imperial Royal and Military's data from the Central Library. He tried to understand the Empire's power background clearly because, as a prince, this was one of the things he should have complete knowledge about. At present, the Lacey Empire was different from any national regime he had known of before. It wasn't a constitutional monarchy, and there was no democratically elected parliament or congress. All the big decisions in the empire were basically made according to the military's needs. It can be said that this empire was a country of military supremacy, with the imperial army's rights being placed above all. His Majesty himself, even though he had such noble status, did not really have much real power. This explained why he made a marriage relation between Berg and one of the most important families in the military, the Burke family. Burke family's Serpent Corps was one of the six great armies of the empire, so this marriage could only further strengthen the status of the royal family in the empire. As Shi Wei was worrying about his uncle's situation, he suddenly received a message. Shi Wei, I am very good here, don't worry. This AI computer, you have to take good care of it, because you can contact me directly through it. Shi Wei was startled, and hurriedly pressed on the contact button. Immediately, a light curtain appeared before him, showing Uncle Berg's face in real dot time projection. Shi Wei could see what was clearly his new bedroom in the background, which made him confused, because Berg was alone in that room. Shi Wei asked him in surprise, Uncle, isn't tonight your wedding night? Why are you sending me a message at this time? What about the Alpha that you have married? Berg smiled and said, I threw him out to sleep in the living room. Shi Wei. Dot. Uncle is really amazing, it's only their wedding night, and yet he has completely ruled over the Alpha. He really is a worthy Omega to learn from. Soon enough, the end of August arrived, which meant enrollment time for new students. The children of the empire would enter formal schooling from the age of five. Then, by the age of fourteen, the Omegas would be sent to Andromeda Galaxy to receive pre-adult education at a school set up exclusively for Omegas. Meanwhile, the Alphas and Betas would continue to study more professional courses, and when they reached eighteen, they'd be admitted into university. After four years, they would graduate, and finally able to participate in the working world as an adult at 22. Since their school would not change until they entered university, there were not many school choices for children. However, each school has its own admission requirements. The descendants of the royal family usually attended school at St. Paul Academy. Shi Wei checked on the information about this school, 
it was a typical aristocratic academy that, in addition to the descendants of the royal family in generals, also included second-generation children from rich families. St. Paul Academy's entrance examination was done in the form of online registration and test. After they had submitted their answers, the result and admission score would be released in within one hour. The entrance examination for this school was very difficult and would be very hard to answer for general children. However, for Shi Wei, those questions were really too simple. There was a one-dot-hour time limit for the test, and yet Shi Wei had already finished his in just half an hour. But, he later thought that it might seem suspicious if he got a full mark, so he went back and purposely answered some of the questions wrong, and only submitted his test paper after that. The test scores and admissions lists were soon posted online. The highest score possible for the test was 150 points, however, because the questions were deemed to be too difficult, St. Paul Academy had lowered their admission score dot limit this year to 80 points. Shi Wei got 130 points, ranked in the middle, but still higher than many Alpha students. Strangely enough, Shi Wei did not see Claire's name, didn't Claire test for this school. He should have, right. Claire's father was Admiral Byron, so, as a descendant of a military family, he should be aiming for this school, because this was the best school for aristocrats in the empire. It had the best facilities, and the teacher's strength was also the strongest in the country. If he wanted to enter a good university once he grew up, coming to St. Paul Academy would be the best choice for him. Shi Wei took a look once again, and still could not find Claire's name among the high. Scoring alphas on the top of the list. The students admitted to the academy this year consisted of about 30% alpha, 60% beta, and less than 10% omega. Because the test was too difficult, the students who scored above 120 points were mostly alphas. The one with the highest score this year was also an alpha, someone called Carlo Burke, with 148 points. So, what about Claire? With a puzzled mood, Shi Wei continued to scroll down the list, until finally, as he arrived at the end of the admission list, he saw the name he had been looking for. Claire Byron, 80 point. Shi Wei. Dot. Turns out he was the lowest ranked, no wonder Shi Wei couldn't find him earlier. Shi Wei thought in sympathy, as General Byron's son, as an alpha, as a childhood friend who was born at the same day as me, you actually scored the lowest on the exam and almost didn't pass, are you all right, Claire? T slash N. I'm lol.ing at Uncle Bird, he is such a badass XD. Chapter 8 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 08 Childhood Sweetheart, C, at General Byron's home, Claire checked on the admission results and couldn't help but feel disturbed when he found out he had only scored 80 points. If his father knew about it, perhaps he'd be put through some hellish training. Grace was in the kitchen preparing dinner. She took a glance at Claire and smiled as she saw his bowed head, the test result is out. Claire nodded, yes, I got in. Grace asked, how many points did you score? Claire fell silent for a moment before finally whispering, 80 points. Mrs. Grace, who heard the result, looked back in astonishment. However, upon seeing the dejected look on her son's face, she only sighed and asked with a slight frown, how did you get such a low score? If I remember correctly, the St. Paul Academy's highest test score should be 150 points, right? Claire hung his head, clutching his little hands tightly. Grace squatted down and rubbed his head softly, saying, Tell mom, what's wrong? Claire explained, I'm too sleepy today, so I fell asleep. When I woke up, there was only half an hour of the test time left, so I didn't answer many questions. Grace. So the real reason why little Claire scored so low was because he overslept. Grace felt like she got a sudden headache and pinched at her temple, this reason, you must not let your father know. Your father hates non-punctual people, he will be very angry if he knows you overslept during your exam. Claire nodded obediently, okay, I won't tell him. That night, General Byron returned home early, which was a rare occasion. 
He was a serious-looking middle-aged man wearing a dark blue uniform, with white gloves on his hands, for golden stars on his shoulders designating him as one of the few noble four-star generals in the empire, and bright patterned stars decorating his hat that symbolized he was a member of the Star Corps. The reason Mrs. Grace cooked the food by herself today was also because she had received the news of her husband coming home by dinner this evening. As soon as General Byron entered the door, she came up to help him take off his heavy uniform and hung up his coat. She smiled and said, Welcome home General. I have prepared your favorite dishes today, please go to the dining room to eat. Although they were husband and wife, Grace had a great respect for her husband, and always used honorifics when talking to him, somehow creating an unfamiliar feeling between them. General Byron glanced at her and asked, What about Claire? Little Claire immediately leaned back from behind his mother, Father, I'm here. General Byron looked at him and asked with an expressionless face, You got 80 points on the entrance exam, didn't you? Both mother and son's forehead instantaneously shed drops of cold sweat. As a high dot ranking member of the military, General Byron's news connection was really well informed. Claire had no choice but to whisper, Yes, I accidentally filled out the wrong answer. Byron looked at him gravely, out of 150 questions, you mean to tell me that you accidentally filled out 70 of them wrong? You dare to lie to me? Claire immediately lowered his head in apology, Father, I was wrong. Byron looked at the golden head in front of him, frowned, and said. It doesn't matter, we can't change what had happened. But I'll tell you now Claire, if your results don't improve once you enter the academy, I will immediately transfer you out of there. Claire quickly answered, Yes, Father. Hearing his affirmative, Byron finally nodded, You are still young, so you don't need to mind about this kind of examination. However, when you are 18 years old, I hope you can do well at the Imperial Unified Examination. Entering San Romeo Military Academy's command department should be your ultimate goal. Claire nodded earnestly. Yes, I'll try. The San Romeo Military Academy that Byron mentioned was directly governed by the Imperial Army of the entire empire, the best military academy. Almost all of army officials graduated from there, so Admiral Byron had determined that place as the direction of his son's path since early childhood. As his eldest alpha son, he hoped that Claire would inherit his mantle at the Army's Star Corps. However, from Claire's current performance, he wasn't really assured of that. Seeing Claire standing behind his mother with his head hanging down, Lord Byron's expression finally softened. He picked Claire up with one hand, and said, Come on, let's eat ENVE as for Claire, after being picked up with a single hand by his father, he could not help but feel a bit envious of his father's muscular arm. He looked at his own thin arm and thought, When I grow up, I will be as strong as father, right? Then, I might be able to beat Shi Wei. After all, I'm an alpha. The family gathered for dinner. As they were eating, Grace suddenly said, Ah, General, I remember you and the headmaster of St. Paul Academy were college schoolmates, can you tell him to put Claire and Shi Wei in the same class? Hearing Shi Wei's name, Claire immediately looked up with shiny eyes. Byron saw this and wondered, why do you want to be in the same class as Shi Wei? Claire answered simply, because we are good friends. Grace explained, I used to take Claire to the palace to play with Shi Wei. The two of them grew up together, so they can take care of each other if they are put in the same class. Since childhood, Claire doesn't really like to play with other children, so Shi Wei is his only friend. That's why, can you get the headmaster's help? Both his wife and son were pleading, so of course Byron was unable to refuse. Anyway it was only for a trivial and harmless matter. He thought for a bit, before he finally nodding, okay, I'll go and talk to the headmaster. Shi Wei's 130. Point entrance score was not particularly conspicuous, but it was a very satisfying result for Queen Anna and King Trent. Queen Anna had already prepared several tailored suits for him, and helped him to dress up. After they were done, Anna's smile turned brighter as she looked at the cute appearance of her son in his new clothes. 
she touched Shi Wei's head gently and said, Shi Wei, starting next week, you will go to St. Paul Academy. When you are there, remember to listen to your teacher and get along well with your classmates. You're an Omega, don't argue with Alphas, don't fight, and study diligently, okay? Shi Wei nodded, I know. You can rest assured, mother. Anna was worried Shi Wei would suffer in school because of his Omega status, but truthfully, she didn't have to. Shi Wei wasn't interested in fighting with his classmates. He had practiced karate until black belt in his last life, so if he were to hit someone, he might send them directly into hospital. A week later, the school year in the Empire finally started. Shi Wei also departed to St. Paul Academy with his luggage. Queen Anna wasn't fond of going out in public, and King Trent was busy, so the task of sending Shi Wei to school fell onto the head of Royal Guard's captain, Admiral Craig. The Royal Guard Corps led by Craig was a pro-Royal Guard. Craig only answered to the orders of His Majesty Trent, even the Imperial Army Marshal had no power over him. He was a very cold man, with a typically expressionless poker face, and his speaking tone was always very cold as well. Because the way he carried himself was so much like a hard stone that had just come out of the fridge, many Omega did not dare to approach him, so he was still a bachelor even now. Shi Wei sat down in the royal suspension car with Craig, as still as a statue, seated opposite him. There was nothing to talk about, so Shi Wei turned his eyes to the window. It was his first time out of the Imperial Palace, and the capital of the Empire's galaxy, Litchfield Planet, was even more prosperous than he imagined, with high dot rise buildings almost filling up the place. The capital's traffic was divided into the upper, middle, and lower layer. The planet's first two layers were using air suspension lanes, while the bottom layer was an ordinary ground dot road. Just imagine, if you were to walk on the road, and raised your head, you'd be seeing many colorful suspension cars floating above you. The sky here was as blue as water, dotted with cotton dot like white clouds, and a few planes were flying through it at the speed of light. Obviously, the view was much more advanced than all the SCI Dutify movies he had ever seen. As they were nearing the school, Shi Wei looked out and saw the complex layout of St. Paul Academy. The complexes were designed to form a complete hexagram shape, with the six buildings in each corner built high and painted silver dot white in color, which made them appear as if they were shining under the glare of the sun. In the center of the hexagram was a towering green building, built in the shape of an inverted triangles, and carved with many vines and flower patterns. It looked like a big living tree, which created a large shady area for the students. The green building was surrounded by a large square, with several musical fountains and many seats built around it as places for people to rest on. On this day, there were students from all grades coming and going out of the school, it was obviously a very busy day. Shi Wei was sent to the school entrance for freshman students. Craig took him to finish the enrollment procedures, received his student card, and then helped him to carry his luggage to the dormitory building. Not far from them, someone asked curiously, whose child is that? They came here by a platinum suspension car, so he must be royalty, right? I heard that the first prince turned five years old this year, just in time for him to start school. I guess the child who passed us before is the prince. I heard he is an omega, he must be very gentle and lovely, hearing this discussion coming from behind him, Shi Wei couldn't help but laugh. A gentle, lovely omega. I'm sorry, students, I'm afraid you will be disappointed. Unexpectedly, as they arrived at the dormitory building, Shi Wei met Claire. Though he had not seen him for two years, Shi Wei recognized him at a glance, Claire's golden hair and clear blue eyes were very unique, and Mrs. Grace was particularly fond of dressing her son as a little gentleman. Today's Claire was still the same as in his memory, he was wearing a white shirt, a small black suit, and a black bow tie, overall looking like a mini version of the dolls in a boutique house. When Shi Wei saw him, he was carrying a suitcase, whining endlessly as he tried to climb up the stair. That suitcase was half of his size, so he had difficulty to even lift it. After each successful stair he climbed, he would take a brief rest, his flushing face was wrinkled slightly, 
making him look like a steam-stuffed bun. Shi Wei felt a bit funny and decided to approach him. When Claire saw him, he was surprised for a moment before his eyes suddenly turned bright, Are you Shi Wei? Shi Wei nodded and asked. You can't move. Do you want me to help you? Claire said. It's nothing, I can lift it. You are an Omega, not to mention something this heavy, his words had yet to finish leaving his mouth, and Shi Wei had already lifted his suitcase with one hand and walked calmly up the stairs. Claire. Five dot year dot old little Claire stood still in shock, staring blankly at Shi Wei's chic figure. Shi Wei is an Omega, how come he has this much strength? How come? With a complex mood, Claire quickly climbed to the fifth floor. Shi Wei had arrived there first with his luggage, his face did not even turn red in the slightest. Shi Wei turned to look at him, smiled and said, new students should live on the fifth floor, but I don't know which one is your room. I'll leave your luggage here, you should be able to carry it the rest of the way yourself. Goodbye. Claire. Goodbye. Claire who was helped by an Omega to lift his luggage, looked at the huge suitcase, then looked at the relaxed smile on Shi Wei's face. He thought to himself, something really seems wrong here. T slash N. By the way, my proof dot reader, Clipart, is a translator as well, and her projects are awesome. Do check them out in here she has three on dot going projects currently. Chapter 9 You are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 09, Childhood Sweetheart, D, Shi Wei's initiative to help Claire lift the luggage was actually well dot intentioned. He remembered that Claire was born with severe anemia, and often had nightmares. Mrs. Grace even admitted to Queen Anna a few times that she had a fear of losing her son. Although he was an alpha, Claire's strength wasn't even on par with Shi Wei. Besides, Shi Wei's luggage was carried by Craig, so both of his hands were free. Therefore, when he saw Claire having difficulty, he readily offered his help, after all, they grew up together. He could not just stand idly by as he witnessed the other boy moving as slow as a snail while climbing the stairs. After he was done helping Claire, Shi Wei turned to find his own dorm. There were several buildings in the student dormitory area of St. Paul Academy. The room number written on Shi Wei's student card was 7511 meaning the seventh building's fifth floor. Room number 11. The cold-faced Craig carried his luggage to the room's door, and Shi Wei immediately followed him to open it with his student card. As soon as they entered the room, they saw a pale-skinned, very beautiful child sitting on one of the beds, with a pillow held in his hands. The child had short, chestnut-brown hair, and a pair of big, clear, light-colored eyes, they were so bright and appeared like gems under the light. When the child saw the military uniformed Craig, he only looked at him briefly in curiosity, before continuing to arrange his quilt. Shi Wei stepped forward, and took the initiative to greet him, Hello, I'm your roommate. You are called Aiden, right? The teacher at the administrative office had told Shi Wei before that he had an Omega roommate called Aiden. It was a result of Queen Anna's instruction for the school to arrange an Omega to live together with Shi Wei. Anna would feel much more assured if Shi Wei had an Omega roommate, and since it was his mother's plan, Shi Wei also had no objection. The only problem was, this Omega seemed to be a little introverted. Shi Wei had taken the initiative to greet him, but he only smiled briefly at Shi Wei, before bowing his head and continuing to do his own thing. The little boy's smile was very shy, with two lovely little dimples on his cheek. However, his hands were clenched on his side, and he looked so tense and nervous. Shi Wei could see that the other child was afraid, his eyes always avoided looking at Craig's direction. Obviously, the tall dot as dot a dot flagpole alpha standing in front of him made him uneasy, after all, there was a rumor that General Craig's appearance would often cause Omega children to cry. That was one of the reasons he remained a bachelor. Looking at the situation, Shi Wei then turned back to face Craig and said. General, you go first. Tell father and mother that I'm fine here. Yes, prince. Craig saluted to Shi Wei, 
then simply turned around and left. Once he left, Aiden was relieved, and gave a friendly smile to Shi Wei, hello, you are the first prince Shi Wei, right? Dot, yes. Shi Wei looked at his pale face and felt a little concerned, are you really so afraid of that person just now? Aiden nodded, and said honestly, that Alpha is a bit fierce. Shi Wei laughed, he is the captain of the Royal Guard, General Craig. His appearance does look very fierce, but his attitude is actually really good. As he said this, Shi Wei suddenly realized something strange, by the way, you've never met him, how do you know he's an Alpha? Aiden answered, an Alpha's pheromone smell is very strong, you didn't smell it. Shi Wei wrinkled his nose and sniffed carefully, I didn't smell it. He paused, before continuing curiously, Omegas can smell an Alpha's pheromone. Most Omegas can do that since a young age, but there are a few that only become aware of it once they become adults, Aiden seriously explained, that Alpha's pheromone was particularly strong, so I felt a little uncomfortable. Thank you, First Prince, I felt better after he left. Aiden once again threw a smile at Shi Wei, this time very sincerely. His character seems very docile, is this a typical Omega? Shi Wei thought this child looked really pleasing, and couldn't help reaching out a hand to touch his head, it's nothing, after all we are roommates, it's only right for us to take care of each other. Also, don't always call me the first prince, just Shi Wei is fine. Aiden obediently nodded, okay, Shi Wei. Shi Wei then went back to tidy up his things, hanging all the clothes his mother had prepared for him in the closet. However, there was still one thing sticking in Shi Wei's mind. According to the data he read, many Omegas are sensitive to an Alpha's pheromones, it would make them uneasy and even create an urge to flee within them when they encountered Alphas with intense pheromones. On the other hand, when Alphas smell an Omega's pheromone, they would feel an urge to possess and protect. This was said to be the nature of attraction between Alphas and Omegas. Shi Wei and Aiden weren't adult, so their body would not produce any Omega's pheromone yet, but Craig was an adult with a very strong Alpha's pheromone, which made Aiden's scared reaction very normal. What Shi Wei couldn't understand is, since he was born, he had never experienced those uneasy feelings. He wasn't even phased by Craig's infamous scary appearance. Is this because my mental strength is too strong to notice it? Or is there a problem with my nose function? Whatever the reason, it was a good thing for Shi Wei. Since he couldn't smell Alpha's pheromones, he didn't have to worry about being influenced by them. In the afternoon, when the students were settling into the dormitory, they heard a unified broadcast from the dormitory's AI administrator summoning the freshmen to their respective classrooms. The green skyscraper that they saw from the suspension car before was the first school building in Street. Paul. Shi Wei and Aiden walked together under the building. In close proximity, it was clear to see just how distinctive the design of the building was. It was obviously built in mimicry of a real forest's tree, in the summer, standing under it gave off a feeling like standing under a tree's shade, just look up, and they'd see green leaves, brown branches and mottled pieces of light and shadow. Looking at the building in front of him, Aiden couldn't help saying, very beautiful. Shi Wei was still very calm, he smiled and said, let's go in, we don't want to be late. When they arrived at their designated classroom on the 11th floor, the inside was already filled with people. Many of the five-year-old children had grouped together, chattering around like sparrows, the classroom was as lively as a market, which Shi Wei had already expected. To his surprise, as soon as he entered the classroom, he saw a familiar golden head, Claire sat in the final row, looking at the door frequently. When he saw Shi Wei, he immediately he ran over to him with bright eyes, and a face full of joy, Shi Wei, you came. Shi Wei nodded, yes. Claire noticed the little valet behind Shi Wei, and couldn't help asking, who is he? There was obvious hostility in his eyes, he looked as if the other boy had taken Shi Wei away from him. Shi Wei introduced them, he is my roommate, Aiden. Aiden put out his small hand and said, hello. Claire glanced at him, then immediately ignored him. 
He continued to look at Shi Wei as he said, I heard that our class has 15 alphas, 18 betas, and only 2 omegas, Shi Wei you sit next to me, I will protect you. Shi Wei smiled and looked back at Aiden, in that case, I think it is better if us two omegas sit together better, what do you think, Aiden? Aiden immediately nodded, you are right. Then two children ignored Claire's gaze and walked to the back side of the classroom, picking a seat. Claire. Dot. Sure enough, Aiden, this guy, had already become an annoyance. Claire cursed him silently, and took a seat in the row in front of Shi Wei's. After a while, a tall woman dressed in a white dress and sandals walked up to the podium. She smiled and said, Hello students, welcome to St. Paul Academy. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Kelly, I'm the teacher of Class 1. If there are children who don't belong to Class 1, or have entered the wrong class, you can leave now. At once, a few children stood up and walked out of the door, apparently they had gone to the wrong place. Kelly continued. The rest of you are Class 1 students, right? The students chorused, yes. Kelly nodded, then you remaining 35 students will be classmates from now on. I will be your head teacher until you are 14 years old. In these nine years, I will accompany you as you grow up, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to consult me. I will be responsible for everyone's daily life and the arrangement of group activities, while other courses will be taught by professional teachers. Remember that your classroom is on the 11th floor, room number 1, do not be mistaken. Kelly paused, smiled, and said. You will stay in this class for at least 9 years, so, I hope that we can get along with each other during these years, become very good classmates and friends. First of all, we are going to do a self.introduction to make you more familiar with each other. The teacher let the students in the first row start the introductions. The children's self.introductions were not creative, many of them didn't know what else to say after introducing their name, and some were so timid that their speech was stuttering. These boring self.introductions went on like this, and it soon reached the bottom of the second row. There was a boy there with a particularly serious expression. The boy walked up the podium and said loudly, Everyone hello, my name is Carlo, I am an Alpha, from the Burke family. I'm very happy to be classmates with all of you, and I hope we can get along well. The name, Carlo, had left an impression on Shi Wei, it was the name of the student who scored 148 points on the admission test. Shi Wei looked at him. Not only did he score first on the test, but his self.introduction was also done without a hint of nervousness, he was still young, yet had such calm temperament, obviously a very ambitious alpha. After his introduction, it was Claire's turn. Although Claire was also an alpha, there was absolutely no domineering alpha's aura coming off him. During this whole time, he was sleeping on his table, and once it was finally his turn, he stumbled on his way to the podium. Claire scratched his head, and said with a drowsy voice, I'm called. Claire, I'm an alpha as well. Shi Wei could see, dislike, written in the eyes of many of the students. Obviously, the lowest scorer in the test, Claire, must be an alpha with low IQ ah. He really brings shame to alphas, this was what many of them had in mind. By the way, I have a best friend in this class, too. Claire finally woke up, and looked at Shi Wei's direction, his eyes suddenly turned bright. He said seriously, his name is Shi Wei, the two of us are born on the same day, we grew up together and have very good feeling between us. He is an Omega, so I hope everyone can take good care of him. Shi Wei. Dot. You come down here Claire, I promise I will not kill you. Do you know what, self.introduction, is, classmate? Who told you to drag me down with you? Shi Wei who was sitting in the back of the classroom rolled his eyes. The teacher seemed to think that Claire's, self.introduction, was very interesting, and laughed, then please, can you bring your good friend here to give us a self.introduction as well? Okay. Claire nodded, and came down to lead Shi Wei to the podium, but after being stared down by Shi Wei, he immediately took his hand back. Shi Wei walked to the front of the classroom by himself. 
He looked calmly at the students under the podium and said. Everyone hello, my name Shi Wei. I am an Omega, but I am not lovely, not cute, not gentle, also do not need to be protected. If you had the wrong understanding about me before, I hope that you students can correct them as soon as possible, thank you. Shi Wei smiled and bowed, meanwhile, the students sitting under the podium felt a slight chill down their back. Wait, is he really an Omega? How can he have a stronger momentum than Alphas? Proof. Read by Cleapart Redheart T slash N. Meet our second couple zero slash. Chapter 10 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Childhood Sweetheart, E. She weighs self. Introduction surprised everyone, but he didn't care. He said it so directly because he hated Claire's attitude of, She Wei is an Omega, we should protect him. Who needs your protection? Therefore, in their first class meeting, Shi Wei said publicly. I am not gentle, not cute, and I do not need protection. He had to stay with this group of people for nine years, and during that period, Shi Wei did not want to hear, I want to protect you, said to him every day, just imagining it already gave him goosebumps. After Shi Wei introduced himself, next in turn was his roommate, Aiden. Compared to Shi Wei's bold and unconstrained aura, Aiden had a typical Omega character. Docile and well-behaved. He walked to the stage, smiled shyly and said in a soft voice, Hello everyone, my name is Aiden. Then he suddenly fell down under the gaze of the crowd. All the children were stunned, and Shi Wei was the first one to react. He rushed to the stage, held Aiden's hand and asked, Aiden. What happened to you? Can you hear me? Aiden. The teacher, Kelly, was scared as well. She had taught in so many classes, and Shi Wei was the most special Omega she had ever seen. And while she was still feeling shocked over Shi Wei's loud and confident self. Introduction, another Omega had actually suddenly fainted. Kelly hurried past. She looked at the pale child lying on the ground, and upon realizing he was unconscious, immediately picked him up and said, I'm going to bring him to the Inf Mary. Shi Wei followed her out of the classroom, and Claire hurried behind Shi Wei. The Alpha and Beta students left in the class looked at each other, there were only two Omegas in the class, but one of them was even more scary than Alpha's, and the other one immediately fainted after introducing himself. Will this class be okay? Meanwhile, Carlo, who was sitting in the front row, frowned and said, Omegas are a real hassle. At the school's infirmary, the doctor did a comprehensive medical examination on Aiden and immediately concluded, this child has polycythemia, a very rare excessive red blood cell syndrome, causing him to have serious anemia since an early age, and a very poor immune system. Today he suddenly fainted because of overwork caused by excessive brain ischemia. Kelly was very surprised, and couldn't help asking, how could he get this disease? The doctor looked at Aiden who was lying on the bed, sighed and said, have his parents been informed? Tell his parents quickly. Kelly said, the only contact he registered during the administration was his Omega father. I'll contact him now. The head teacher went out to contact Aiden's father, leaving Shi Wei and Claire in the infirmary. They looked at each other in apparent confusion, they had never heard of this strange disease before, so they were at a loss over Aiden's condition. Shi Wei could not help but ask, Dr. Uncle, excessive red blood cell syndrome, what is this disease ah? The doctor explained, there are things called red blood cells, RBCs, in a human's bloodstream. They act like cleaners which will help to clean up harmful substances from our body. However, when the number of RBCs exceed the normal amount, they will attack the normal cells in our blood and become the enemies of our body. This condition will result in anemia, organ failure, and can even lead to death in serious cases. She Wei. Dot. He originally thought Aiden just had heatstroke, but unexpectedly it was a serious disease. The normal cells in the bloodstream are constantly being swallowed up, which sounds scary. Is there a way to cure it? Shi Wei asked. The doctor answered, people who have this disease can now rely on cytotoxic drugs to temporarily control it, 
but to cure it completely, it can only be done by hematopoietic stem cell transplantation and systemic blood replacement. Matching stem cells are usually found in the patient's closest relatives. Watching the unconscious boy lying on the bed, Shi Wei couldn't help the surge of pity rising inside him. Such a small child, yet he had to battle with this rare disease, Aiden's luck sure was bad. No wonder his character was so quiet, he must be restrained by this disease of his. Even if he wanted to be lively, he couldn't for fear of his anemia suddenly acting up. Mrs. Kelly soon returned, and with a heavy face she said to the doctor, I have informed his family, and the boy's father is coming. She looked at Aiden, then turned her gaze at the two children around him, Shi Wei, Claire, you two go back first. And if the other students ask, just say that Aiden got heatstroke, so they don't have to worry. Tell your classmates to do self.study for now, I will return to the classroom soon. Shi Wei said, Teacher, I want to stay here with Aiden, let Claire go back first. Claire wanted to say, I'll stay here with you, but was glared at by Shi Wei, and quickly changed his mind, Oh, okay, I'm going back first. Aiden's father soon came. He looked like a very gentle man, with tall stature, the same short chestnut dot brown hair as Aiden's, and light dot colored eyes, his resemblance with Aiden was uncanny. Kelly had said that she would be contacting Aiden's Omega father, so this man must be the one who gave birth to Aiden, an Omega male. BL.net It was Shi Wei's first time seeing an Omega male with a child, and he somehow felt very awkward at the thought of this man giving birth to Aiden. However, the man in front of him had a very gentle temperament, and it was impossible to dislike him. The man went to the bedside anxiously, took hold of his son's hand and asked, How is he, doctor? The doctor said, Your son has excessive red blood cell syndrome, do you know about it? The man nodded, I know. The doctors continued, To eradicate this disease he must undergo hematopoietic stem cells transplant. Does Aiden have brothers or sisters? The man bowed his head and answered, No, I only have one child. The doctor pondered about it, then you'd better contact your husband as soon as possible, make plan to have another child, so you'll have better chance of a matching stem cells for transplantation. This disease can be controlled for up to nine years, and you should know better what would happen if you can't find the right hematopoietic stem cells when he reaches 14 years old. The man's face was pale, and after a moment's silence, he finally nodded, I know that I'll find a way. At this moment, Aiden finally opened his eyes. Seeing him waking up, a slight smile appeared on the man's face. He kissed his son's forehead lightly, and said, Aiden, don't be afraid, Dad is here. Aiden nodded, holding his hand, Dad, don't worry, I'm fine. The man touched Aiden's head, and stood up, Teacher Kelly, I'll speak to the headmaster about Aiden's special circumstances. He hasn't been healthy since childhood, so I'll have to bother you to look after him. Kelly immediately said, You are welcome Mr. Randy, I'm just doing what I should do. So this man's name is Randy. While Shi Wei was thinking this, Randy turned to him and said, You are Aiden's roommate, His Royal Highness Prince Shi Wei, right? Shi Wei nodded, Yes. Randy bowed respectfully toward Shi Wei and asked him earnestly, Can I trouble you to please take care of my son in the future? Shi Wei hurriedly answered, It's no trouble. Don't worry, I'll take good care of him. Randy smiled and thanked him, Thank you, First Prince. Shi Wei was a bit startled by the man's smile, it was very good. Looking. Aiden had obviously inherited his physical characteristic from his father, both of them looked like they were carved from the same mold, only in a larger version and smaller version. The bond and affection shared between this Omega father and child was also very wonderful, it looked really warm. However, although he did feel warm seeing these two, Shi Wei still refused to imagine himself giving birth to his own children. Randy and Kelly went together to find the headmaster, while Shi Wei stayed in the ward with his roommate. Aiden reached out his small hand and gently held on to Shi Wei's, saying, Shi Wei, don't tell the other students about me being sick, okay? Shi Wei smiled, okay, I will help you keep it a secret. The child lying on the bed smiled weakly, 
looking at Shi Wei with eyes full of trust, before I saw you, I always thought that the first prince must be very arrogant, and difficult to get along with. However, your personality is actually so easy going, and you are also so good to me. The child was obviously feeling a bit moved by his roommate's action, so Shi Wei smiled, and touched his head while saying. Get some rest, I'll be here to accompany you. They were clearly the same age, but Shi Wei acted like an adult as he took care of Aiden, sitting on his bedside like a parent, touching Aiden's head, then pouring a drink for Aiden and feeding him, this view really was surprising. When the doctor came to check on Aiden's temperature, he couldn't help but laugh as he witnessed this scene, he thought. Although these two small kids are Omegas, their characters are really different. After Claire returned to the classroom, he found out what kind of mess his class had been turned into. The students had gathered into groups of twos and threes, and when they saw Claire came back, someone immediately asked, what happened to that Aiden? When will the teacher come back? Claire explained, everyone don't worry, Aiden fainted because of heatstroke, and the teacher said they'll come back soon. Carlo, who was sitting next to him, frowned once again and said, Omegas are really troublesome. This sentence clearly painted all Omegas with the same brush, including Shi Wei. Claire turned to him and asked, how are Omegas troublesome? Carlo said confidently, obviously we are all the same human beings, but they have that annual whatever dot estrus, and have to be taken care of for three days and nights. Also, Omegas are sickly since childhood, they can't do this, can't do that, even casually basking in the sun can make them faint, don't you think the existence of Omegas is kind of troublesome? Claire. Dot. The rest of Alphas who heard him speak were stunned. As an Alpha, he not only didn't want to care and protect Omegas, but he actually thought of those precious Omegas as troublesome as well. This kind of view is dot very unique. At that time, these students had yet to realize that St. Paul Academy's Batch 579, Class 1, is a monster concentration camp. T slash N. Late by a day, but well, here it is. The second update. Yay. Zero slash proofread by. Cleepart Redheart.